Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 18th of December. Indian PM Modi again defends new farm laws, assures MSP will continue. UN envoy urges reduction in violence should be top priority in Afghan peace talks. And activists and opposition parties condemn arrest of Pashtun leader in Pakistan. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday emphasized that the system of minimum support price will stay as he strongly defended the new farm laws that have provoked massive protests by farmers near the national capital New Delhi. Modi also accused the opposition of misleading farmers and supporting the protests to promote their own agenda. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi in his another bid to persuade farmers to end their ongoing protests against new farm laws has said minimum support price or MSP regime will continue and that they are only being misled by the opposition on the issue. The Prime Minister, while addressing farmers of central Madhya Pradesh state virtually on Friday, said the farm laws have not come overnight. Parties, experts, progressive farmers for long demanded the reform. This comes as Union Agriculture Minister Narendra Singh Tomer on Thursday wrote an eight-page open letter to farmers appealing them to understand the laws properly. He also said the government is ready to give a written assurance regarding MSP. And this is why I give the country of the country this vishwaz that the first MSP was given to the first MSP was given to the first MSP. The MSP will not be closed or closed or closed. Meanwhile, the ongoing farmers' protest at borders of Indian capital New Delhi entered its 23rd day on Friday. Farmers from northern Punjab, Haryana and Uttar Pradesh states have been protesting at the Singhu, Tikri and the Ghazipur borders, demanding the laws be repealed as they fear they will lead the government to stop buying their produce at guaranteed prices and leave them at mercy of private players. The UN Secretary General Special Representative for Afghanistan, Deborah Alliance, has said she expects reduction in violence will be a top priority when the Afghan peace talks resume in early January. The peace talks between the Afghan government and the Taliban, which were being held in Doha since September, have been halted without any major conclusion. At the time when international experts are raising concern over increasing violence in Afghanistan amid halt in peace talks due to resume from January, U.S. envoy Dobra Alliance has said she expects violence will be a top priority when the peace talks resume. Alliance on Thursday told the Security Council that achieving sustainable peace in Afghanistan will only be possible if security anxieties are addressed and the process is inclusive from the outset with meaningful participation by women, youth, minorities, victims of conflict and religious leaders. Any sustainable peace will need to be owned by Afghanistan's very diverse society. This is only possible if the process is inclusive from the outset, with meaningful participation by all constituencies, including women, youth, minorities, victims of conflict, and religious leaders. Meanwhile, as disagreement on the venue of the next round of peace talks continue between Afghan government and the Taliban, President Ashraf Ghani has invited the militant group to Kandhar province to hold a discussion about bringing peace in the war-tone country. Referring to the recent attacks by the Taliban in various parts of Kandahar, Ghani has pledged that the Afghan security forces will restore security for the people in the province.
In news from Pakistan, the Pakistan government has decided to hold the Senate elections in February. Amid controversy of early polls in the upper house of the parliament, Prime Minister Imran Khan has assured his party's ally, Muttahida Qaumi movement, of a prominent role in the recently formed Gilgit Baltistan government, while the MQM gave him complete assurance of support in the forthcoming elections. A delegation comprising the federal ministers and parliamentarians from Mutahida Qaumi Movement, MQM Pakistan, on Thursday called on Prime Minister Imran Khan, where they assured him of complete solidarity during the upcoming Senate elections. During the meeting, it was decided that Khan's Pakistan Tehreek-e Insaf Party, MQM and Grand Democratic Alliance, a cluster of seven different local parties in Sindh, would jointly contest the Senate polls. The MQM is a prominent ally of the government at centre. The federal government earlier decided to hold Senate elections in February and invoke advisory jurisdiction of the Supreme Court on open voting for the polls. The elections are to be held for 52 seats of the upper house because as many members of the 104-member Senate will retire on March 11. However, Controversy over the elections has intensified as the Pakistan's People's Party and Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz have rejected early polls. Moving on. Activists and opposition political parties have condemned the arrest of Pashtun leader Ali Wazir, who is also a member of National Assembly of Pakistan, over charges of passing derogatory remarks against state institutions. Members of Pashtun ethnic minority have long blamed that they have been targets of military operations and ethnic stereotyping by the Pakistani state and its security forces. Pakistan People's Party Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari on Thursday condemned the arrest of Pashtun leader Ali Wazir by stating that it has been the modus operandi of the fascist governments to implicate elected representatives in false cases to crush the public voice. Bilawal slammed Prime Minister Imran Khan over the move and said the arrest of Ali Wazir, a member of National Assembly, was against the democratic traditions. Police arrested Ali Wazir on Wednesday in connection with a case registered against him and several leaders of the Pashtun Tahafuz movement for charges including hatching a criminal conspiracy and passing derogatory remarks against the security forces, police, rangers and other state institutions. Pashtun Tahafuz movement, a socio-political group, is known for exposing military offences in Pakistan. Uh, PTM uh, strongly condemn uh, the arrest of Ali Wazir, uh, the member of uh, Parliament of Pakistan, on concocted uh, charges. Uh, this arrest uh, shows the fascist uh, face uh, of the state of Pakistan, uh, depriving its citizens of the freedom of expression and the right to assembly. Members of Pashtun ethnic minority have long blamed that they have been targets of military operations, ethnic stereotyping, enforced disappearances and fake encounters by Pakistani security forces. Amid reports regarding the apprehension of 36 Indian fishermen by the Sri Lankan Navy, New Delhi has said it is in close touch with Colombo to verify the information as well as to ensure consular access to the Indians and facilitate their early release. The Sri Lankan Navy in two separate occasions arrested the Indian fishermen this week, allegedly breaching the international maritime boundary line and illegally fishing in its waters. Amid reports regarding apprehension of 39 Indian fishermen by the Sri Lankan Navy, New Delhi on Thursday said it is in close touch with Colombo to verify the information as well as to ensure consular access to the Indians and facilitate their early release. Indian Foreign Minister spokesperson Anurag Srivastava said that the fishermen issue has been on the agenda of bilateral discussion between India and Sri Lanka for many years. Government attaches high priority to this issue. We are in close touch with the government of Sri Lanka through our mission in Colombo as well as our consulate in Jaffna. We are trying to verify this information to seek early consular access and to facilitate release of our fishermen and their boats. Meanwhile, India and Sri Lanka will hold a virtual meeting of their joint working group 
on fisheries on December 30th. That will take up the issue of the recent apprehension of 36 Indian fishermen and seizure of five fishing vessels by the Sri Lankan Navy. India and Sri Lanka share an expansive oceanic border without any perceptible demarcation and fishermen on both sides ignore rules while netting their catch. Moving on. Just weeks after the world's loneliest elephant was rescued from a life of misery in Islamabad Zoo, two Himalayan brown bears were airlifted from Pakistan's capital to a sanctuary in Jordan this week. The two brown bears, Susie and Bablu, have finally reached the Al Mawa for Nature and Wildlife Sanctuary in Jordan. Two former dancing bears have been removed from a controversial Islamabad zoo just weeks after the world's loneliest elephant was rescued from the institution. The bears were the final animals to be rescued after a court ordered the zoo be closed, following years of campaigning by advocates including US pop stars Cher. Suzy and Bablu, two Himalayan brown bears, were prepared to be airlifted on Wednesday from Pakistan's capital to a sanctuary in Jordan. Dr. Amir Khalil, a vet with rescue organization for Paws, said both bears had serious health problems adding that they would need time to adapt to their new environment. The two bears have uh, serious health problems, not physical because physically we were able to manage with the bear in the last weeks, but the main problem as they consider, according to the record, as former dancing bears. So some of the dancing bears without teeth at all. This rescue operation comes weeks after an elephant called Kavan, dubbed the world's loneliest of his species, was rehoused after leaving the zoo. People across India have started thronging markets for Christmas shopping by following safety protocols amid coronavirus pandemic. Shops filled with Christmas trees, Santa Claus dolls, stars and lights are attracting customers from all faiths. People across India have started thronging markets to buy decorative items ahead of Christmas next week amid coronavirus pandemic. Shops in southern Hyderabad city were on Thursday evening filled with Christmas trees, Santa Claus dolls, stars and lights, which are attracting customers from all faiths. People bought Christmas trees and tinsel streamers, baubles, stars, lights, stockings and belts to decorate it. Christmas is celebrated with much palm guilty and devotion across India with carols singing, cakes, candles, glittering Christmas trees an exchange of gifts. I'm sure this year we'll celebrate it with a lot of uh, uh, um, being more sensitive because a lot of people have lost many things. Many people right. have lost their beloved ones, many people have lost their jobs, uh, some people have lost their income and many things. So uh, we, uh, today we are uh, living, we are hale and healthy. So that itself, that itself is a great blessing. To, uh, great blessing. Meanwhile, Ashok Kurmi, president of social organization Sion Friends Circle, dressed up as Santa Claus in India's western Mumbai city and distributed masks and sanitizers to people on Thursday to help the city in its fight against the deadly coronavirus. Kurmi said he used to celebrate Christmas every year by distributing toys, chocolates and gifts to children, but this year he decided to use Santa Claus as a theme to generate awareness to curb the virus spread. और मेरे को सेंटा ने सैनिटाइजर मास्क दिया और मैंने सोचा नहीं था कि मेरे को मास्क और सैनिटाइजर देगा इन दी ऑन फ्राइडे रिपोर्टेड 313831 एक्टिव केसेस ऑफ कोरोना वायरस विद 144789 डेथ्स सो फार वेल दैट्स द वे इट वाज इन साउथ एशिया दिस इवनिंग बिफोर वी कंक्लूड द टॉप स्टोरीज वंस अगेन Indian PM Modi again defends new farm laws, assures MSP will continue. UN envoy urges reduction in violence should be top priority in Afghan peace talks. And activists and opposition parties condemn arrest of Pashtun leader in Pakistan. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night.
subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button